Hello there and thanks for watching uh, this video of Palo Alto Video Training Service. Um, in this video we will be talking about doing some initial configuration on the firewall, the virtual firewall that we actually installed on previous video. Uh, if you remember our previous video, what we've done, we have uh, created the lab uh, with uh, our uh, Windows machine and what VMware workstations created obviously different LAN segments for inside and outside and all those kind of things and uh, uh, installed or imported the uh, Palo Alto VA files uh, into the VMware workstation. And uh, we've got the firewall uh, up and running. Um, in this video, we basically need to set up the IP address, the management IP address. The first thing that we need to do is, is just setting up the IP address of, of the uh, uh, management interface of Palo Alto firewall and then get access through our PC uh, and start obviously setting it up. Um, there is a there is a specific command that we have to obviously use to uh, do that that I will uh, show you in a second. Uh, and uh, in this video, basically, that's what we do. We just uh, set up the IP address on the interface and then obviously start setting up the rest of the configuration through the browser. Um, we will be talking about some general configuration like time, NTP, DNS, and things like that, uh, user management, uh, logging, and how to do things like that. Um, as uh, the firewall is not uh, completely ready, uh, because we don't really have the other IP addresses, we will have the only management IP address here. Uh, there will be uh, obviously some limitations with this particular video, so uh, I'm going to show you where, where the locations are and things like that, and then later on in another video, uh, uh, come back to it and, and start setting them up. Uh, so some of the configuration might not be able to do it right now, but it, it, it's a good idea for you to know where the system configuration, main system configurations are located and how to basically do those changes. First thing we're going to do, we're going to set up an IP address on the management interface uh, of the Palo Alto firewall and then we should we should be able to get access to uh, the firewall through our PC. So let's get started. As you can see I've already um, uh, started my Palo Alto uh, firewall um, and uh, default username and passwords are admin. So we just log in with admin. Admin. Um, the um, uh, there is a similar uh, similarity between um, all of the firewalls and uh, all all other uh, network and uh, um, basically security devices like Cisco, uh, Juniper, and others. Uh, things like uh, you can use tab to complete commands, or you could use question mark to. Uh, get a list of the commands and things like that. Uh, initially, when you log into the of the firewall, you cannot configure anything. This is mainly a read-only uh, um, interface. If you want to start setting up the system, if you want to configure the system, you have to configure into the configuration mode. And now, uh, basically, we can start setting up the IP address and things like that. As I said, the first thing we want to do Going back, set device config system IP address to, to set up an IP address on our uh, management phase of the battle of the firewall. Set device config, and you can see if you press tab, it will uh, complete or, or question mark setting um, system IP address. And then we type the IP address that uh, we, we need to use as management interface of the Palo Alto Firewall 192.168.62.10 was our IP address. And then netmask is going to be 255, 255, 255.0. And if we want to set up a default gateway, we can set up a default gateway as well. But uh, for now, I don't really need a default gateway for this lab. So I'm just going to enter, and uh, there we go. So that's uh, that's it. So we've uh, 
basically specify the IP address for the management interface of the Palo Alto firewall. Next thing we need to do is basically to commit the change. So if you are familiar with the uh, uh, Juniper firewalls, it is uh, pretty much similar concept. So you have to obviously set up an IP address or, or change the configuration first and then uh, type commit to uh, commit the change that you've done and apply the change that you've done. So that's, there, there is a bit of a difference if uh, if you are a Cisco person, because with Cisco is is uh, it will apply the moment that you actually type the command, but uh, with uh, a lot of hours you have to commit it uh, to, to get it applied to the interface. So now we've done this, um, our firewall should be ready and accessible from our, our uh, PC. Um, so I just open the browser, just type the IP address of the firewall, press enter, and there we go. So default username and password for Palo Firewall again, admin, admin, login. So you can see, um, you got the dashboard here. Uh, there are some general information and things like that uh, on the dashboard that you can see, system resources and things like that. Um, there are different tabs on the top that we will be talking about all those tabs uh, on uh, different videos. Uh, these dashboards and, and things like that, they are, they are customizable so you, you can add and remove things. We will be talking about that too. Uh, what we want to uh, start talking about for this particular video is initial device configuration. So we go to the device tab. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Basically, um, we have all these uh, system configurations uh, and requirements here. So we're going to start obviously with some main uh, things and configuration. Like you can see in the device tab, there's a management tab, uh, and there are different sections here. So if you click on uh, the little icon that you can see on the on the, on the top right side. Uh, you can basically modify any of these widgets here. Uh, just click on that. So we can change the host name. Just leave it as PA uh, VM. We can change it to whatever we want. Uh, you could uh, specify your domain name in there if you want to. Or the log and banner. Uh, you could uh, change the time zone and stuff. So you're gonna obviously I am located in Australia, so I'm gonna choose Australia time zone. Um, change the date and time. So we just uh, all the initial configuration that you have to. Uh, do that's it. So we've done some general uh, setting changes. Then the system is. Uh, Trying to apply the configuration. So usually when you uh, change the time zone and stuff, it's going to take some time uh, to do so. So I give it a bit of time. Okay, so you can see that the uh, initial configuration will be done, applied there. Uh, 
If you want to set up authentication profile, we will be talking about authentication profile in a later day. Don't worry about that. Uh, so you have uh, some specific settings about logging and things like that in here as well. Uh, they could specify. Um, the other important thing that you need to uh, know is uh, if you want to change the logos and things like that on, on, on your firewall, uh, make it uh, specific to, to your own company. You could do it here. Um, uh, uh, reverting back to the configuration or saving configuration can be done here, exporting configuration, things like that. There is a services tab that uh, we need to do some changes here as well. So basically, uh, we need to assign a uh, uh, DNS server in there as a uh, I mentioned at the uh, previous video, uh, Palo Alto firewalls are, are next generation firewalls and DNS and name resolution is quite important for next generation uh, firewalls because they're doing a lot of things like uh, uh, application filtering and, and, and URL filtering and, and things like that. So, so they, need to, they need to be able to understand names and, and, and URLs specifically. Uh, and if they don't, obviously uh, they don't work as expected. So you could specify your DNS server here. I uh, use my uh, internal DNS server 192.168.62.2, which I think that was, uh, sorry, that one, that two, that is my uh, um, uh, Windows 2012 server on the internal network, and I'm using a free DNS server as a secondary. If you, if you have any NTP server, you could set up your NTP server uh, in here as well. I don't really have an NTP server right now, so I'm not worried about that. My uh, cloud settings is manual. And uh, hit apply again. The other thing that you need to know here is uh, the service route configuration. So you see, uh, for most of the uh, system configuration and, and, and system specific uh, uh, services, uh, Palo Alto Firewall will be using uh, management interface to route the traffic by default. If you need to change that, if you have a server, see that my DNS server, for example, is located on the internal network. If you need to uh, change that, you need to basically change that to uh, whatever interface that uh, you, need, uh, uh, you, you, you need. You need to do, um, for example, if Ethernet. One slash one is the interface that I need to uh, change it. I need to change it here. Otherwise, Palo Alto will try to uh, use management interface to route the traffic. Um, the other thing you need to know is uh, Wildfire. Wildfire is the cloud interface of the uh, Palo Alto firewalls. Uh, basically, is is the location that they do all all the analytics and, and uh, malware protection and things like that. So when there is a new uh, a suspected file or, or there is a there is a new uh, malicious activity uh, the file will be sent to uh, Wi-Fi and will be analyzed there and if there, if there is uh, a virus or something it will be reported back to all of the Palo Alto firewalls around the world and it will update the signatures that they have and it will be blocked so that's another thing for you to know you could specify the settings that uh, you need to have here what are the type file types and file size limits and things like that that will be sent to, to Wildfire. The um, session settings, so you could limit your uh, sessions in the firewall. You could say this is this is uh, good to make sure that the firewall, uh, uh, when it's under DOS attack or anything like that, it won't be uh, overloaded. Uh, it, will be, uh, it won't have any background on the firewall operations and, and, and management. Um, so uh, you could you could uh, change these timeout settings here as well. And uh, if you have any hardware security module, basically to uh, control and manage your uh, cryptography keys and things like that, you could specify it there as well. You don't really have anything at the moment. So that's basically the initial configuration that you have to do.